Hello, I'm Pastor Sherman Bradley. And I'm Pastor Sadell Bradley. And we're coming to you from the Warehouse Church. And this is day five of our Israel experience. And we were in Jerusalem on this particular day. We were actually in the Old City. And the Old City has four quarters that also represent the pluralistic kind of society that Israel is. Uh, there is a Christian quarter. There is a Islamic quarter, there is a Armenian quarter, and a Jewish quarter. And so as we said before, uh, this trip was sponsored by United Theological Seminary. We were in a methods of interreligious encounter. So it wasn't just Christocentric. It wasn't just about the where that Jesus walked and all the things that Jesus did. It was also about all the different religions that were there. So the first thing that we did was go to the Temple Mount, uh, the Herod's Temple, this recreation of Solomon's Temple and then all of these other religious places that were in the same vicinity. It was fascinating. We first went to what's called the Dome of the Rock. Yeah, so some call it the Temple Mount, and you can see it from Mount Olivet. We saw it the day before, before we actually arrived at it. And once you get up to it, it is spectacular. It is literally a gold dome, gold plated, and it's mosaic. Uh, tapestry and painting are, are just phenomenal. You could walk around it and you would just marvel at the entire vastness of it and just what detail is there in putting it together. It's something you could see when we were on the Mount of Olives. We could see this whole area with all of these uh, various religious sites, including the Dome of the Rock, uh, which is also called the Noble Sanctuary. Uh, it was uh, believed to be the place where the Prophet Muhammad ascended into what's like the divine essence in a, on a winged horse. Um, and so it's a holy place that uh, Islamic people go to visit. Uh, if they can't get to Mecca, they don't get to get their pilgrimage to Mecca, what they're supposed to do within their life. Some people go to this place, the Dome of the Rock, uh, to worship and to, uh, uh, to gather along with other Muslims who are believing uh, the same thing. And because there's such a history of different religions and kingdoms operating this particular landmass, we saw people from all around the world, from a variety of different religions, and people who were just tourists who wanted to be at this location. It was pretty amazing. So over the history, you know, the Babylonians, the Greeks, the Byzantines, the Ottomans, the British, the Jewish, yes. I mean, all of these people considering this land valuable, considering this land mm. holy, yes. somehow wanting a piece of it. <laughs> and so yes. at, at, as we were in this kind of area, there was this place called the Court of the Gentiles. Um, and King Herod wanted to have a place, there were certain places that only Jewish people could go. Uh, and then he wanted to have places where Gentiles could also convene out, outside of the, uh, the inner court, the Holy of Holies, the, uh, the places that Jewish people could be. And so that is the place where some of the people in our uh, group went when they didn't really want to go into uh, the area of the Dome of the Rock. Uh, they stayed out in the court of the Gentiles. We had a rabbi with us uh, that stayed out farther uh, just because you know of, of religious beliefs. Um, and so this is a holy place and we were told that it's even a place that Jesus as a rabbi would be among all these other philosophers, teachers, and rabbis and have groups of disciples all out in this court learning and answering questions. It was something I, I believe that kind of foreshadowed uh, the Gentiles being able to come to faith in God's eyes. Exactly. And there was a church right there on site, an Ethiopian yeah. church, in Ethiopian as church as well, that we got to go inside and see some. And they were in there worshiping themselves. They were in full white attire, and you could see their expressions of faith. But in there, it was just fascinating what lengths they go to and building and then presenting their artistic expect, uh, expressions of their faith. Yeah, the church was called Kadein Meret. Uh, down in, and it was kind of like in the basement. It would kind of, you had to go down steps to get it. So in certain places you had to ascend and a lot of places you had to go down level by level by level. It, it was a fascinating how far down some of these historic places were. And so we were going to go to the temple, but not on this particular day. So we were seeing all of these other sites in the old city. Uh, and this next site that we saw was the Via Dolorosa. The Via Dolorosa is uh, the way of suffering, the way of the cross. And it is uh, really um, 
uh, commemorating and in a certain way recreating the steps of Jesus on his way to crucifixion. Yes, and it's beautiful the way that they have outlined these steps. Uh, how many? Twelve was it? Twelve? There's actually fourteen stations. Fourteen across, different stations. But eight, but only eight of them are actually biblical. So that was kind of interesting. There were yes. some things they said happened that weren't in the scripture. Yes. <laughs> for so for those of you who have heard that it is extremely touristy, there is that element. But don't let that element dissuade you from the beauty of the richness of what is real history there as well. So along this way now, you know, it's a tourist attraction, there are more shops and places to eat than you can really uh, enumerate. Uh, but they would have these stations and you would go and you're walking up and they would say, you know, this is the place where uh, Simon the Cyrene helped Jesus carry his cross. This is the place where Jesus went on trial. One that was very um, uh, dear to me and I, and I sat in the Church of the Flagellation. Uh, and that is a place where it's commemorating when Jesus was whipped by the Roman soldiers. You know, with this cat of nine tails, with this glass and shards and metal that ripped his, his skin off of his body. The beating, the scourging, the mocking, the plucking of the beard. All of it happening on this Via Dolorosa. And this was like station number two. And they had this church of the flagellation. And you were able to sit there and reflect. And as I reflected, I began to weep, thinking about the love of Christ for us being willing to suffer such a brutal and tragic, not just the death, but leading up to it. Yeah. The place for me along that journey was where they said this is where they cast lots for his garments and where they mocked him, the, the soldiers, and slapped him. And uh, that just the. It, there's the law, but then there was those who took the law into their own hands after, uh, and uh, knowing that they were about to ultimately crucify him, it wasn't enough. They had to humiliate him along the way. So people from around the world were gathering and just going through these processions and able to stop and each procession had this like station, it had a marker on it and it would say, you know, this is the place that X thing happened. And then you would have this opportunity to reflect and maybe your guide would tell you a little bit more about it. You would pray, some people would weep, some people would lay their hands on the particular place. Um, so, you know, despite the fact that all of these other more um, uh, materialistic kinds of things were happening, you know, people were really centered in on identifying themselves with the suffering of Jesus Christ. Yes, and as you're there and there's so much of the architectural uh, history still present, it's easy to uh, reimmerse yourself into what we're learning from the history. And it brings new life to now being back here in the U.S. and reading these stories on paper. My mind can go directly to locations where the actual representation happened. So this winding road, the Via Dolorosa, this way of suffering, uh, 600 meters, about 2,000 feet. And they're talking about a cross. You know, normally we see a cross with a kind of like a T sign, but they were talking about just the really, the wooden pillar um, that Jesus would be having to carry. They, they talked about you know, how heavy it would be. And then we were walking up this kind of cobblestone and it was very steep and, yeah. and very places. And just imagining someone trying to carry this weight up this, you know, very steep cobblestone. You know, I mean, I know that Unleveled. it took my feet some time, you know, walking through all these places to kind of heal and get together, thinking about, you know, and I have sneakers with thick, you know, soles on them. And thinking about Jesus having to do that that and emaciated and 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 blood running from him and losing iron and having weakness and all those things and then you know this this idea of the weight of what he was about to do you know from the garden of Gethsemane when he says let this cup pass through going through these crowds and they're screaming and they're saying crucify him and he knows he's innocent and he's wondering whether or not the things God said about him are going to come to pass as he's going through this way of suffering. So then we had lunch at a place called the Merch Stand, and it was an interesting lunch. Sherman and I don't eat everything. He's pescatarian, so we, we don't eat a lot of meat or anything like that. I eat more than he does. Uh, but at this particular place, uh, we had a different kind of pizza. I think it was probably more like a Palestinian. It had like olives and... It was very healthy. Why? It, <laughs> it had a different kind of cheese. It didn't have 
the traditional tomato sauce with it. So it adds some uniquenesses to it. But then it has a French fries. So we ate there. This is a place, uh, the merch stand has a, a fountain and it's surrounded by shops. Again, you know, they're always selling not just uh, uh, not just the paraphernalia for um, the Holy Land, you know, the right. nativity scenes, the olive uh, cuttings of the crosses and things like that. They were selling Nike jackets. They were yes. selling uh, leather purses. They, it was just like a big shopping area. Yes, um, it, was a, it and, was a flea market upscale. But then you got to eat uh, a lot of the different kinds of food that folks were able to eat that didn't have the same dietary restrictions that we have. But it was a wonderful experience to just experience all the culture and the different uh, tastes. Yeah. Even if you didn't like it, you got to try it, right? Uh, no, but <laughs> others did try it and they had a great time. It was really nice. And to meet the actual um, people who, because they could speak, our gods could speak the language, yeah. uh, they were introducing us to and interpreting the folk for us, and yeah. interpreting for us as well. So then we went to uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And, you know, a sepulchre is a uh, basically a tomb. It is a place where it's usually rock or carved out, uh, where people are buried. Uh, it's interesting that Jesus used to call the Pharisees and Sadducees whitewashed sepulchers. <laughs> As a derogatory ter term, they were dead man's tombs. But this was a holy sepulcher because they believed that this is the place where Jesus was buried, uh, in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. And so it was crowded and there was a Greek Orthodox Church with Greek Orthodox uh, ministers there who were guiding this entire experience and hundreds of people were waiting in line. I think we waited in line at least 90 minutes, right? It was really, I had to sit down and get back up. I lost count <laughs> at an hour, so I, I don't remember how long it was. And then you get in there and you, you're in there like this because it's a and very small club. And you had to get down club. very yes, low. You had to go in. I was too tall, so I had to stoop to get through and go in. And you can only go in and come out. They don't want you hanging out in it. They don't want you praying in there. They were yelling at us to get uh, out of there because they had so languages. many people trying to, to come in and out. But then there was, so it was like they had this ornate uh, expression of what they believed mm. was the site of the tomb of Jesus. But then... Our guides took us to another site around the corner that was more like a replica yeah. of an actual stone tomb. And yeah. we have some pictures of that. And still, you know, very small. I was like, the Israelites very short, you know, I remember. Well, <laughs> you know, Saul was a head and shoulders us, above him. You know. Yes, but they also reminded us that they didn't have the nutritional value that we have today and what was accessible to them 24 seven around the clock. Mm -hmm because of just how they the had walking. to go about living and how they had to go about farming, they were shorter people back then, much shorter than we would imagine. And so we stooped down into both these places and really the one that was more seemingly authentic to the time frame uh, was very moving. Yeah. Uh, no line. No line. And, and you, could, you could think, we went there and then we also went on another day to a place called the Garden Tomb that had a similar feel. But you could think about, you know, here is Jesus being buried. Here are his followers and the women uh, grieving, afraid, uh, wondering if the things that he has said about himself are going to come to pass, missing their friend, missing their rabbi, their teacher, and feeling like maybe even all this time that they had invested might be for naught. And there are times when you go into these kind of situations and, you know, where Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. If anyone comes after me, Matthew 16, 24, deny yourself, die to yourself, take up your cross and follow. So this whole day for me was like a remembrance, not just of what Jesus has done, but what he is calling us into, to be willing to suffer, to be willing to die to ourselves and to rise again in him. It is an experience that you want to have for yourself. I. I implore you to take the journey for yourself. What we're describing to you is just pales in comparison to actually being there for yourself. And you'll be glad you did. There were people who were there who were bowing, who were weeping, almost at every site, whether it was where Jesus was born, where Mary was born, where Joseph was born, where you know this you know crucifixion happened, where this and, and every site was holy. 
So we encourage you, again, to uh, go for yourself if you can't. Learn what you can, even if you can't go. Uh, because a lot of times we're in churches and we're hearing topical messages about marriage and family and finances and all these other things and we are forgetting the foundations of our faith and we're forgetting that Jesus is a historical figure who walked this earth, who lived who lived spotlessly, who did miracles, who was crucified, buried, and rose again. And we want to ensure that that message of the gospel reaches everyone. Yes. So stay tuned. There'll be more to come on our trip as there are a few more days that we experienced, not just Jerusalem, but other parts of Israel as well.